We just saw in Joplin, Missouri last month where it did come out that five people in that hospital that survived the hit died because complete loss of electricity and their respirators were not This kept me thinking and started talking to other people about other things. While I'm reading one congressman talking about how EMP would only impact a couple of thousand people for a day or two. And I'm like, gee, I wish you would say that while you're on an Airbus or a Boeing 777 that's completely computer controlled and in a major event, that will turn into a brick. Remember Captain Sully, the incredible pilot who saved that plane in New York, he had an engine hit, but he still had power to control his elevators and airlines so he could glide and control the plane. If he had lost all power, you could have the best pilot in the world up front. He's just going to watch the brick fall. Okay, for a year, I keep thinking in terms of Tom Clancy. I mean, all the publishers, my editor is saying that's what I want and everything else. So you, know, you got a hero and everything else. But it just wasn't working. And then I had the gestalt. And it, it, it was in a situation almost like this. How many of you have recently sat through graduation ceremonies? <laughs> How many of you heard a graduation speaker get up front and say, I know you folks are looking forward to a wonderful day of celebration. I only have one or two things to say. <laughs> An hour later, you're just like, please shut up. Get him on the stage. And it's worse because I'm wearing all these doctoral robes, which I tell people it's the only chance for a straight guy to wear a velvet. And, you know, it's, it's just... <laughs> And I'm stuck in the front of the stage, so I can't fall asleep. And the sweat's pouring off of me. And then, it's like God whispering in my ear. I'm looking at you guys. And I'm looking at my students who I've known and loved and worked with for four years, sitting right there. And it struck me, and it put a lump in my throat, and it was, what happens to us? Right about us. What happens to that kid I've known for four years? And I'm going to be going to his wedding next week. God help me, what happens to my daughter? And by the way, my daughter is healthy. Um, I based the two young ladies, the two daughters in the book, on her as she was at 12 and how I imagined her to be at 16 or 17 in a time of crisis. And I actually rushed home, got the robes off, ordered a pizza, and um, I spent about seven days straight sitting in front of the computer, taking a nap for an hour or two, go back. And I was only about two or three hours into writing this when I had another gut-wrenching moment, when I felt something wet pressing against my knee and snorting, and it was my golden retriever, and I looked down at her, and another lump in my throat. It was the first time I thought, what happens to them, our beloved companions? And then this whole story just fell into place. Went around town, interviewed people. Uh, I said it right in Black Mountain. Almost all the characters in the book are real people. <coughs> Names change, so I can't be sued. Uh, I always have to point out that the police chief is not the police chief. I have made the police chief a bit of a foil in the book, but the police chief of Black Mountain is one incredible guy. Um, police helped me, pharmacists, doctors. I just kept asking the question, what happens? What happens? And what was startling to me was, so many of them saying back, I never thought about it. I don't know. Let me just give you a couple of statistics. According to the Congressional study of 2004, in the event of a major EMP that was nationwide, 90% of all Americans would die within a year to two years. 90%. Now, how can that be? Well, when I'm doing interviews, um, just recently did one on, out of Phoenix, and this question came up, and I said, what's the temperature there? Oh, 105. What's the percentage of people of retirement age living in Phoenix? Well, about 20, 25%. What happens to their air conditioning? How many of them will die? Where do you get your water from? The average town only has three to four weeks of food on hand. Uh, where do you get your medication? Things I never really thought about before, but I'm starting to talk to people. 
about 20, 25% of our population at any time is on some sort of mood altering or mood controlling medication. Okay, I'll admit, I'm on a mild antidepressant. You write a book like this, you need an antidepressant, right? Um, but one half to one percent of the population 50 years ago would have been locked up for their own protection, protection of society. What happens when their medication gives out in 30 days? How many of us are on medication related to heart conditions? I'm talking to my pharmacist, and she breaks down in tears, saying, my God, Bill, she said, well, of course, confidentiality, but the pharmacist knows everything that happens in the town, by the way. And she's going, do you know how many people in our little town of Black Mountain are on transplant-related drugs? How many need pancreatic, uh, en uh, pancreatic enzyme disorder? She's running down this list, and she's sitting there with the tears running down her face. So I wrote the book. And by the way, that whole mind prophecy thing, I, I know what happened. Uh, how many of you remember the age of pre-computer when you were writing a school paper and you're typing and a sheet of paper and you got to put a footnote in at the bottom, but you could, it's suddenly you notice that the, the, the words are like angling off of the paper and it's like, I can write the whole blankety thing again? All right. Uh, all of you post-computer, you, you don't know how hard it was back then. Well, imagine in the age of rock, with poor guys chipping the rock. He's gone around, and suddenly somebody goes up to him and says, You idiot! Get up! It got about 500 more years to go. And, and, oh crap, I'll just end it May 2012. <laughs> See, there's one of the problems right there. We talk about EMP, or CNE, which is a solar-created event. And they look at you like, Are you a Mayan? What are you talking about? So anyhow, the book came out. Much everybody surprised, it became a bestseller. Um, I wanted to share one story about after the book came out, besides people calling me up and saying I've scared them too much. Um, actually, you know, the town of Black Mountain, the, the tourist industry went up. People want to know, where did they hang that guy? <laughs> <laughs> I got some funny ones, but I'm not going to share them. <laughs> Last year, NASA asked me to come up with Langley to uh, give a talk on this. And this was just before NASA lofted the uh, new solar observatory, which if you have uh, a hookup to solar weather alerts, you might recall, how many of you had a little message pop up in your email a week and a half ago saying, major solar event? Um, depending upon your faith, um, either start a real prayer service or start doing your Hail Marys right now, because when I clicked on it and I'm looking at the images, this one, this solar event, actually had debris coming down across a quarter of the distance of the sun. If that baby had been named straight at us, we wouldn't be talking here right now. So anyhow, I go to NASA. And there's an auditorium like this. It's filled about three or 400 people. And I think most of them were there because they can skip work for an hour and a half if they go to one of these talks. They're government employees. Yeah, uh, but no, seriously, these were really great people. Um, and there was a lot of PhDs uh, in the hard sciences. Now, I got my PhD from Purdue. And in the hierarchy of life, in the pecking order, when you're sitting around at a party and people are talking about, hey, you know, what are you getting your degree in? And somebody says, well, I'm getting in nuclear physics, and this is my dissertation, or I'm getting in on astrophysics, or I'm getting in on molecular biology. And then I said, well, I'm getting mine in history. <laughs> and they just like stare at you, it's like, go away. <laughs> so when I got up in front of the audience, I looked at these folks, the book had been out about four or five months, and, and I said, uh, if any of you think I'm crazy, tell me now. It will make me feel better. And I was expecting them to throw cabbages and rocks. At the end of an hour, in which I only talked for about five minutes, and they did most of the rest of the questioning, I closed with, you know guys, I'm more frightened walking out of here than when I walked. 